That is a huge burrow. All right, this puppy is agitated. Oh my gosh. Ah! No! That is a mad tarantula. I'm Bree, and I'm a park ranger high up in the Rocky Mountains. Follow me on my adventures as we use nature as our classrooms, and we'll explore how the natural world endures, survives, and thrives in the most wild and untamed ecosystems. This week, we're going to one of my favorite cities in the U.S., Tucson. This Arizona desert town has some of the most breathtaking and unforgiving landscapes in the world. Sitting only 60 miles from Mexico, not only do they have some of the hottest habitats, but they have some of the hottest, yet tastiest Mexican food that I've ever had. But first, we have to pay a visit to my good pal, Walter. Okay, so this is Walter Dix, the, the desert sulcata tortoise. Um, they can grow up to about 200 pounds, and right now he is only about 45 pounds, so he still has quite a ways of growth to go. So actually, uh, his name is Walter Dix, but he might be a female. We don't actually find out the sex of this tortoise until they're five, so he's a He's about due for a, a checkup to see what kind of tortoise he really is. These tortoises are uh, from the Sahara Desert, all the way in Africa. They were introduced in the 70s. Now they have habituated themselves into the Sonoran Desert down here in Tucson. So to escape the hot Sonoran Desert heat, they burrow down into the ground, uh, sometimes up to 45 feet deep. Um, and they can go for a long, long ways. But this is to uh, cool off, he gets fed, awesome veggies and Brussels sprouts on a daily basis. It's kind of cool that this is his water source too, right? Even in the desert, they're gonna be uh, just eating the cactus around their, their burrows as their water source. They're actually overpopulated here. We have a lot of um, sanctuaries and habitats. Yeah, so they can live over 200 years. Oh my gosh. So yeah, when you're going out to buy a little turtle hatchling or tortoise hatchling, that's like a lifelong commitment. So he likes it here in the, the hot Tucson desert. He actually does really well. So they do really good in um, 85 to 105 degree weather. So we want carapace to... is gorgeous. Yeah, it's very pretty coloring. This looks like the rings of a tree. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you can almost be able to tell his age just based off of that. Like, there's five different shades uh -huh. of colors in there. Can I touch your belly, Walter? Oh, that's that's nice and sturdy and flat. I like his neck. Look at all of those. <laughs> now that the temperatures have dropped to only 98 degrees and the sun is starting to set, let's head into the wilderness to see what we can find. Maybe one of the most recognizable desert symbols is the saguaro cactus arguably the largest cactus in the world. Check out this saguaro or saguaro cactus. Uh, that is pretty unique. You can only find it here in the Sonoran Desert, nowhere else on earth. So that's called an endemic species. I know we've talked about that before, but it's also a really important keystone species for the desert ecosystem here in the Sonoran Desert. So it also provides a lot of habitat for animals. One of these holes can actually provide a lot of habitat to uh, bird species here. It's a huge water source for all of the animals that are trying so hard to survive in this harsh ecosystem. So just like most plants in Arizona or in the Sonoran Desert, uh, everything has thorns, which are actually adapted leaves for this plant. Um, so they have adapted to become sort of a defense mechanism instead of uh, the structure, the function of photosynthesis, which works really well for this, this cactus. It grows one really, really long taproot, uh, which tries to like suck as much water as available from the groundwater system. But then it also has tens of feet worth of lateral and horizontal roots. And why that is, is rain's not a very prevalent uh, phenomenon here in Southern Arizona. So when it does rain, it gets absorbed super quickly and you wanna have the roots that are really, really close to the surface so it can get as much of that water as it can before other plants start to absorb it and use it. So it's approaching nighttime here in the desert. What 
place that just a couple of hours ago was pushing temperatures in the triple digits. Today it was 102 degrees. Tonight, it can actually drop as low as 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you really wanna see what the desert has to offer, come at night when the desert wakes up. So nighttime is actually the best time to look for wildlife here in the desert because it's so much cooler and the wildlife likes to come out and play once the temperatures drop. So we'll see what we can find. So we are following this, uh, what looks to be a game trail. It could just be a wash that water has um, eroded away but I think animals have taken advantage of it and now it has become a game trail uh, because they know that no cactus is growing in this area. It's all been like trampled down and it's really energy efficient for them. So this is a spot I think we could definitely look for wildlife on. Okay, so we are in this riverbed and I want us to form a transect line where it's one, two, three of us just walking straight and looking for stuff in your area. And so hopefully we don't miss anything. So we're here in Javelina Wash right now. So I'm assuming it's named after the fact that there are javelinas in the area, which are really aggressive, pig-like, basically desert boars. Um, they have tusks, they're really aggressive, uh, and if we run into one, uh, they, they're probably not gonna be very happy that we're in his territory. So, you keep your eyes out. <laughs> Do you smell that? Do you smell that? What do you smell? It's like, from my experience, it smells like a uh, cow farm, like some, some sort of farm. Like a javelina? That's what javelinas smell like. actually hear a ton of insects out right now and when there's a ton of insects there's a ton of bats so bats are actually one of the most indispensable animals in the Sonoran Desert because they are the primary nighttime pollinators for cactus oh look 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 a toad <laughs> out that desert toad has a DMT, a psychoactive <laughs> drug. Um, I just went and washed my hands really well because that can actually absorb through my skin uh, and I definitely do not want to have any psychoactive experiences out here in the desert. Not here for my vision quest. <laughs> a general rule of thumb in the desert is if you're slow and fat, there's probably a reason that you're still alive. And that reason, more often than not, is through utilizing poison or venom. But it didn't take me too long to find what I've been looking for all night. I've got a couple holes that look like they could be tarantula burrows. So there's either a tarantula inside one of these right now, or they've just come out to do some hunting for the night. They're all burrows. Look at them. Oh my gosh. Burrow two. Dang. There are probably tarantulas all over here. <laughs> oh, look, 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 look. There's a tarantula. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, I'm actually not recording it. Ah. <laughs> no. Wow. Ah, I don't like tarantulas. I don't like spiders. Oh my god, it's so cool though. Uh, that's like the size of my palm. That's a big tarantula. That is the biggest spider I've ever seen. Oh my gosh. I've actually never seen one of these guys before. Wow. Holy. It, this is a Mexican blonde uh, tarantula that lives here in the Sonoran Desert. They're really sensitive to vibrations, so I'm gonna try to sneak up on here. But I wanna be super careful because they have these hairs on the back of their abdomen uh, that they take their back legs and try to like shoot out at soon to be predators behind them. So I can't believe how close I'm able to get to this tarantula. And I think it's a male because the abdomen's a lot smaller, 
Uh, females have a bigger one. But these tarantulas are pretty docile in nature. They have a bad reputation because they're creepy and crawly and do the shifty little movements that uh, give people arachnophobia. Um, but they're actually pretty docile animals. Males only live to about five or 10 years, and then the females can live up to 30 years. Uh, they're ground dwellers, so they live in burrows down deep within the ground. They line with their spider silk so that the cave doesn't fall in on them. So their, their venom isn't that strong, um, but it's just enough to paralyze their victims, their prey, so they can use their fangs to then suck all of the innards out. They're really sensitive to vibrations too, so all of their eight legs um, pick up vibrations in the ground, so they can feel when a predator is walking up on it, and they can see and sense uh, when a prey meal is walking in front of its burrow. These guys are actually prey to a bunch of different animals here in the desert. So coyotes will eat them, birds will eat them, lizards will eat them. Um, I've even known some people to eat tarantulas. Oh my gosh. All right, we're gonna let this little guy do its thing. It's out hunting. Well, I think we were pleasantly surprised with the amount of wildlife that we saw out here in the Sonora Desert tonight. Uh, it doesn't really surprise me though, because in the desert, uh, Nighttime is when stuff comes alive.